Splatoon is a bit of a strange game in that it's a third-person shooter where the main aim isn't to kill the enemy, but to paint the floor. Stranger still, it's a post-apocalyptic game if the story mode is anything to be believed. So it would make sense that some of the weapons would be a bit... weird. I'm not talking about the rollers or the paintbrushes, as they make sense in the form of painting. I'm talking about weapons made from common household items that we humans use today. Guns that are made from stationery, hoses, water bottles, and cleaning items. Sometimes you just gotta make do with the items around you. Let's start off with items retro Nintendo fans should recognize immediately. The N-Zap is a rapidly firing, highly accurate gun in the Splatoon universe, and it's based on the Zapper that was released for the Nintendo Entertainment System. In the game, there are two variants, the N-Zap 85 and the N-Zap 89. The N-Zap 85 is modeled after the Nintendo Entertainment System Zapper that was released in 1985. You may be familiar with the game Duck Hunt that had that patronizing dog in it. Look at him, laughing at us, mocking us. And would you believe 89 is based on the Zapper that was released in 1989? The change in design was caused by a law requiring all toy guns to either have an orange tip or an orange exterior, something that is still in effect to this day. Continuing with the Nintendo theme, the S-Blast 91 is a weapon modelled off the Super Scope for the Super Nintendo. The Splatoon universe has a class of weapons called blasters, which are often hard-hitting with explosive rounds, and the S-Blast is one of these. Another interesting feature of both the N-Zap and the S-Blast is that the decals on the side of the weapons are in English, rather than the Inkling language, something none of the other weapons have. I wonder if they have Yoshi Safari in the Splatoon universe. Remember the old four coloured ballpoint pens? Don't try to tell me you didn't try to make two colours come out at once. We all did it. Now, what if that pen was transformed into a gun? The ballpoint splatling has four visible barrels, which change the player's ink colour. They rotate at high speed, which causes the bullets to spread. The handle for this gun is the pen's clip. It's such an interesting use of something most people don't even really pay attention to. The Clash Blaster is the bane of many Splatoon players' existence. It fires rapidly with bursting bullets that hurt a lot. There is often no escape from the Clash Blaster unless you happen to have a long-range weapon. But what is it made from? It appears that the barrel is a pencil sharpener, while the bullets are crayons. It would be safe to assume that the ink is then melted crayon. Ouch. No wonder it hurts. It's so strange that the sharpener is the barrel, as normally pencils go in the hole, not out. Either way, the weapon looks adorable, but it's deadly. Unfortunately, the next one is just as deadly. But I suppose they wouldn't be weapons if they weren't. The Sniper Rider 5B belongs to the Charger class of weapon. These are the game's sniper rifles, except they require the shot to be charged up to shoot. With such a basic weapon, it can be hard to be creative, but the Splatoon devs have managed it. The Sniper Rider 5B is unique compared to the other charges because once it has been charged up, it can hold 5 shots of ink. 5B is also the rating of a pencil's graphite depending how hard or dark it is. The reason this is important is because the barrel of the Sniper Rider happens to look exactly like the mechanical pencil paper made sharp writer. The entire name is a pun on the type of pencil it's based off. The Splatana is a new class of weapon introduced in Splatoon 3. It is essentially a melee weapon in a game based around shooting. It can still fling paint like rollers can, and is considered deadly up close. This is especially true for the Splatana Stamper. While it may look like a chainsaw at first, the belt is covered in self-inking stamps. Each stamp seems to have a different character, but whether this is Japanese or the Inkling language, it's tough to say. If the player charges up their swing though, the belt will spin rapidly before unleashing a powerful slash of ink. Either way, it gets Sheldon's stamp of approval. Which it should. He created it. Ah, uh, the arrow spray. A notorious weapon that has a love-hate relationship with players. It has a special ability to fire ink rapidly in a wide cone. This is because the item the weapon is based off is very similar to an air compressor. Again, the name of the weapon is a pun. By injecting air into the ink, it allows it to spray further in unpredictable ways, making painting stages a breeze. It also means it's inaccurate, but who cares when it's fun to play with? Another Splatling, the Nautilus, has an ability most other Splatlings do not. 
Normally, once a splatling has been charged, it needs to unload the entire charge before it can be charged again. Not the Nautilus, though. It can start charging, reusing what's already left. This is because of the distinct coil what gives it its name. While the wiki suggests that the Nautilus's design is based on a wickless alcohol Bunsen burner, I believe that it's actually based on the retractable ID cards holders. Like the Nautilus, these often work by having a coiled string inside the casing that retracts. What do you think? Now with the stationary based weapons finished, things are about to get weird. Look around your house right now. How many of these items could become a weapon? Maybe one or two? Let the Splatoon team blow your mind with their creativity as they make even the most mundane household items into an amazing weapon. Isn't that just an umbrella? And the answer is yes. In the Splatoon universe, they're called Brellas and are the shotgun class of weaponry. The basic Brella is the Splat Brella. The player pumps the handle of the Brella to fire off a series of pellets like a shotgun. But if a player leaves the finger on the trigger, the Brella's canopy becomes a shield. This leads to a variety of unique combos. Ah, the sloshes. Which is the fancy Splatoon word for bucket. There's a variety of sloshes from the basic bucket to the downright weird. Trust me, it'll get weird. I mean, it makes sense that if you can use rollers, paintbrushes, and other painting paraphernalia, that bucket should also be included, right? But just a bucket would be boring. So we're looking at the Dread Ringer. A bucket with two sections, one designed for the mop to enter and another to drain it of excess water. The Dreadringer uses this everyday function to throw two ink projectiles at once. If you picked up a mop bucket with two sections and threw the water out, it would come out both sides, right? It also looks pretty weird too. It can be hard to make what is a sniper rifle into an interesting weapon, but the Splatoon devs have managed to do it not once, but three times. A type of charger, the Goo Tuber is an interesting weapon. It takes a while to charge, and its range isn't the greatest, but it can kill an Inkling or Octoling on only a partial charge, meaning it is a hard hitter. Another feature of this weapon is that normally chargers can only hold a charge for so long before they need to reload. The Goo Tuber can hold a charge longer than any other charger in the game. Recently, it's been upgraded to be able to hold two charges at once. Odd for a weapon modeling on a siphon pump, these are normally used for removing used oil or water trapped in something that can't be tipped out. Maybe the coils of pipes are why it's able to hold so much ink? Until the Splatoon developers confirm it though, it's tough to say. The sloshing machine is another bucket, but this one has a rotating drum in the middle, just like a washing machine. There are compact camping washing machines, and they look quite like this. As opposed to the normal slosher, the sloshing machine's ink spins as it moves through the air. For an item that normally cleans messes, it seems ironic that it would be perfect for creating one as well. There's a few sloshes based on cleaning items, actually. Although the last one is supposed to be a cleaning item, it may not be. Final charger, but unable to escape the cleaning inspiration it seems. A fast charging but less hard hitting charger, the classic squiffer has less range than the standard splat charger. This makes sense, as its ink reserve is a cleaning fluid bottle. Look at that thing. It feels like it'd hit hard if the inkling squeezed the bottle with its arm like a bagpipe. Continuing with the cleaning theme, the barrel of the squiffer looks like the nozzle of a high pressure washer. In Splatoon 3, they emphasize this by adding duct tape where the bottle and the barrel meet. Does this mean Sheldon is getting sloppy as the games go on? And now for something completely different. Honestly, this weapon is hilarious. It looks like Sheldon stole a window wiper from someone's car, attached a sponge to it and called it a day. It still has the spring that keeps it against the window or in the air. Maybe he is getting sloppy. As far as Splatanas go, this one is nice and quick with an emphasis on speed over power, unlike other Splatana that will be mentioned. Ah, the squeezer. It's... certainly a weapon. Mold off a champagne bottle, the bottle acts as both the barrel and the ink reservoir. The metal cage around the barrel is a musolet, an item that prevents the cork from coming undone due to the pressurized contents inside. The way the squeezer plays is also inspired by champagne. The first shot is a long-range, quickly accurate projectile, like popping the cork on champagne. If the player holds down the trigger, the rest is a wide, short spray like champagne finally released from its prison. The next weapon is a different class, but has a similar type of concept. 
What sets the dualies apart from the normal shooters is that the Inkling or Octoling using them can perform a dodge roll, increasing mobility at the expense of some ink. Designed ways, they're different from other shooters because they're a pair of weapons that are dual wielded, hence the dualies moniker. The Dowser dualies are more interesting than most dualies because they are based on fire extinguishers. It's true, the base of the dualies are mini fire extinguishers and the nozzles are hoses. If that's not enough, the Dowser dualies have a slow fire rate until after its dodge roll is performed, at which point it becomes a rapid fire weapon. Almost like a fire extinguisher that's had the key removed and used. The decavitator will make sure no inkling or octoling has any holes in their teeth. Mechanically, the weapon is a splatana, being close range and hard hitting. The design though is based on an electric toothbrush inside a sheath. The base attack keeps the toothbrush inside, while the charged up attack allows the toothbrush to pop out and deal extra damage. It's definitely the type of weapon that when you first see it, you go, what the heck is that? Back to the buckets. Uh, sloshes. The explosion looks like Sheldon found a fuel canister and the remains of a jet heater before fusing the two together and calling it a day. Does the ink come out superheated? Who knows? It seems like it probably would. It does mean that the explosion has a special ability that other weapons don't have. Normally, once the ink hits an inkling or an object, it stops. Not the explosion. The projectile will keep going until it hits a solid surface. Upon hitting the surface, the projectile will explode. To compensate for this, the explosion is slow and uses a lot of ink per projectile, making it mechanically different to most other sloshes. Introducing the Blob Lobber. This is the weirdest weapon of all, and yes, it's a slosher. A unique weapon that shoots out ink in the form of round balls that bounce off surfaces. It's often easy to be caught off guard by these bubbles as players expect them to vanish quickly. Now, the Blob Lobber is supposed to be based off of a portable bath, but I have a different theory. To me, it looks like a traditional Japanese urinal. If it were based on a bath, it would make sense that the ink that comes out is round as it's based on bubbles. But look at it! It's the perfect size for a urinal! It's supposed to be based on a cleaning item, just like most of the weapons, but I still say it's a urinal. With the game being set in a post-apocalyptic world, it makes sense that the Splatoon devs would reuse items left behind by the human inhabitants. If you want to know more about the world of Splatoon, check out this other video about the series' dark lore. Otherwise, which weapon was the weirdest to you? Do you play Splatoon and main one of these weapons? Let us know in the comments and please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Stay fresh!